Well, we say good morning and praise the Lord uh, to those of you who uh, will be joining us this morning in our study as we continue to study the Word of God together. Uh, we do honor the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. We are so grateful to him for blessing us and allowing us this privilege to come again and to be back in uh, the presence of his anointing and certainly in your presence as we share out of the word of God. Uh, we thank God as always for those of you who will be coming in with us. Uh, we thank God for Brother uh, Kevin and Sister Takara, and uh, we thank God for those of you that are in the house with us today. We certainly honor the man of God who is sitting beside me to our pastor, Elder Rogers, and uh, certainly to our elect lady and our present Sister Loretta, and myself and my wife, Sister Crystal, and to all of those that are assembled in the house, uh, to uh, Deacon Felix who signed on we praise God for the privilege to study his word. And we have uh, this morning a profound uh, mm. message mm. Uh, that says that the word of God is good for us. The word of God is good for us. So as we look into the word, as we begin our study, uh, we certainly want to remind ourselves of the things that God has already told us and the things that he is continuing to tell us out of his word uh, because uh, even though they were written thousands of years ago, uh, they are still uh, relevant to the way we live if we're going to live for the Lord. Uh, so uh, with that being said, uh, we'll get back and we will... I'll give our pastor the opportunity to open us up. Again, we say praise the Lord and good morning to you. And uh, we thank God again for allowing us this privilege and opportunity to come before you to bring the words which he has given unto us for this lesson today. And we ask your prayers that you pray for Elder Willis Spoon and myself. We do honor him uh, that as we speak, we speak God's word. It can be challenging to us a lot of times when we have learned something or heard something for so long and have gone that away, and we think it's right. And then God word come along to let us know that it's not right. Sometimes it's a challenge for us to change over from what we've heard for so long to follow what God's word is saying. But we ask your prayer, and, I, I, and there may be some things said, that, but don't get upset with us because all we're going to do is give you what the word says. And what you can do, you can go through the Bible and follow us, but we'll give you scriptures that you can follow us that we may uh, speak only what God says. Because this is what it says, God's word is good for us. Mm -hmm. So we only want to give you what God's word says. Amen. This is our lesson text this morning for Lesson 7, October the 18th, 2020. God's word is good for us. We have our focus thought, if we, if we are to please God, we must listen to and honor God's word with our focus verse coming from 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Our lesson text is taken from 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Again, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. Also coming from Luke 11, 28 through 32, but he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign and there, and there shall be no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas, the prophet. For as Jonas was, was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The queen, of, the queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented of their preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. 
we have our lesson outline. All scripture is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instructions in righteousness. We must hear and keep God's word. Jonah preached in Nineveh responded with repentance. God's word inspires faith. God's words bring hope. God's words equip us to do God's will. Father, it is in your precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, as we come again this day, O oh God, to bless these thy people and even to bless ourselves with this word that you have given us this day. Let our ears and hearts now be open to this word to receive it, O oh God. Lord God, bless us, God, if what we've been, been taught for years and what we've heard doesn't line up with you. Bless that your word come to correct us, God, to get us in right standings with you. Lord, bless us that we don't fight your word, even though it might not feel good. It might, be, it might not sound good. It might be different from what we've heard. But Lord, bless that we don't fight it. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let it settle and resonate within us, O oh God, that we may live according to your word. Now, Lord, bless your teachers. As we open our mouth, God, let the anointed word come forth, which you would give us unto us, that you may bless the ears of your people. And Lord, from this day, let us not be just mere hearers of your word, but bless us, God, that we may be doers of your word, that we may be pleasing unto you. Do it for your glory and your honor, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. We are grateful to our pastor for opening us up with our lesson and our outline. And uh, as we continue to do, we remind you of where we have come from so we can align uh, the topics of this uh, study together. Uh, remembering that we uh, are studying from the subject, the purpose and plan of God the purpose and plan of God. That is this quarter's subject. Mm -hmm. We have had individual lessons or aspects from this purpose and plan of God to outline what God intended from the beginning. Uh, I often say that, you know, God isn't a God that he needs uh, to make corrections uh, as we go along. These things were done uh, even before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. God is all-knowing. God is all-seeing. So when we recognize that he is the all-powerful God, he's the only sovereign one, that his plan uh, was not something that constantly changed because of man. Man changed, but because of God's love and his mercy, God will always bring us in to uh, his will. And even if it means God sharing his mercy in our lives, because we are so stiff necked, we are so hard headed and unwilling uh, to give over to the word of God. So uh, our first lesson was, um, and as pastor was uh, praying, you know, the prayer is that Lord, we need to have a made-up heart. Um, you know, w we need to get over ourselves. And we need to hear the word of God. And we need to seek God for its understanding. Even when we don't understand, the Bible says if we lack understanding, mm -hmm. we can ask it of God. Um, and, and, and above all, what we've got to recognize is we don't control anything. God is in control of all things. And I mean, we look at some things and, and we don't understand them. We look at some things, we're troubled by them. We look at some things and we just don't know how it's going to work. Our trust is in God. And if we put our wholehearted trust in God, we don't have to worry about how things are going to turn out. We saw this when uh, uh, Israel was taken into captivity by Babylon. Well, I meant... God had already worked it out. It mm -hmm. looked like uh, they were going uh, to go under, but God, even in their uh, persecution, elevated them. And, uh, you know, because you also have to understand, regardless to who works against you, God has the power to change their hearts. God can move on them that they would recognize who he is. But above all, we have to stand for something. Mm -hmm. If those Hebrew boys had bowed to Nebuchadnezzar, then they would not have known that there was a God greater than the gods that he served. And we have it, you know, I meant we have to seek it. 
We're not Belshazzar. When the handwriting came on the wall that he didn't understand, he had to go seek somebody uh, to give him the interpretation thereof. Well, we are blessed that God has given us his Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is what teaches us. The handwriting on the wall is in the word of God. He has written his word with truth and it will not be denied. Uh, so then we have to rest in the fact that what God has said will come to pass. And we have to just trust and seek God for that understanding. Uh, Paul, on uh, a uh, week before last, uh, uh, told us that when we all come to the knowledge that we're all sinners, and really and truly we're the chiefest of sinners, mm -hmm. you know, regardless to what we have done or what we haven't done, if we are not baptized, if we do not repent, and we are baptized in the name of Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit by the evidence of speaking with other tongues, not only were, mm -hmm. but we are chiefest of sinners mm -hmm. because we have to come unto salvation. And then last week, our lesson said, listen, we are, are, are missing the blessings of God because we are not able to redeem ourselves. We're not able to pay the ransom of what it costs to redeem us from sin. Only Jesus Christ, the righteous one, was able to come. He didn't have any sin, but because of his love, John 3, 16, we quote it all the time, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him would not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus came, took our sins upon him. And as we saw, sin brought him to death. Not that it killed him, hmm. because he declared, no man take my life, I give it. And, and the word of God declares, uh, there's not a greater love in the world than a man who would lay down his, love, his life for his friends. And he did call us friends. Now, we need to take advantage of the friendship and come to the knowledge of who Jesus is. Again, the lesson is, as teacher just said, that our understanding may be open and that we forget about ourselves and open up our hearts and our minds and receive what the word of God is saying to us. Again, I can say this can be a challenge. But Paul gives it to Timothy. He said all scriptures, not some, but all is given by the inspiration of God. And one of the hang up is that people love to say man wrote the scriptures, man did. But they didn't write of their own accord, nor of their own knowledge, of their own understanding, but it were inspired by God. God gave them what to write. God told them what to write. See, God didn't come himself. If God had to come himself, you would just hear words. You wouldn't, you would hear a voice. You wouldn't see anybody. You just hear stuff. And we, we, we would run. We wouldn't understand. We would be frightened. We couldn't accept that. So what God did, he used the man. He used Jesus Christ to come to bring his word to help us understand who God is. And that word is through the teachings. And Jesus taught these 12 men. And when Jesus was finished, he only had three years. He gave it to able-bodied men to bring forth this word to help men understand. God used men because guess what? That's who we're dealing with, men. Men will hear men. So but what God did, God gave us this word to give to people. Jesus wanted us to understand who God was. Jesus wants us to understand God's purpose for us in life. So in the teaching, as Paul told Timothy, that you, you will teach men that we will be well furnished in all righteousness. In other words, this doctrine, this teaching, this lesson, these instructions will help us through life. That whatever challenges come up against us in life, through and by God's word, we will be able to handle them. That nothing could conquer us, nothing could stop us, nothing could defeat us. It did not say nothing wouldn't come up against us, but through the instructions of God's word, we would not get upset. We would not get knocked off course. And if we did, the word would instruct us how to get back on course. But we first must accept the teachings. It, it may go against the grain. It may go against our understanding, but we must accept the teachings. It's only God's word. It might not make sense. It might be weak. It might be foolish. 
but it's God's words. And if this is God's purpose and this is God's plan for us mm -hmm. that we cannot take credit, but that God himself will be glorified. So in order for us to be successful and well and, and thoroughly furnished in this life of righteousness, we have to use and receive God's word. So again, our subject uh, lends the thought that God's word could be like medicine. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is the ability to heal us, mind, body, and soul. We, we draw your attention to a few of the Old Testament scriptures so you can understand um, the word of God and where it derives. In uh, Jeremiah 36 and 2, this is what the Lord says to Jeremiah. Take thee a roll of a book mm -hmm. and write therein all the words, listen to what it says, all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel. Jeremiah didn't just think of this. These were words that God spoke to Jeremiah to speak against Israel so Israel would understand. So I mean, when, when, when people say uh, men wrote the Bible, that's fine. <laughs> but you have to understand where men got the Bible from because mm -hmm. it wasn't of themselves. And it says against Judah and all the nations, for the day I spake unto thee from the days of Josiah even unto this day. Now, God had covered the kingship of many kings in the ear of Jeremiah, that Jeremiah was to speak. The sad thing is that Israel and all the nations did not hear God, even though God's word would have been good for them, because the word of God says, for God will not do anything unless he declares it unto, uh, unto and through the prophet, so that the people would have an opportunity to get things right. You know, God is not a destroyer of life. He created life. He is not here to destroy us. He came to save life. Mm -hmm. So then for us, we have to understand, we have to listen to the word of God. Ezekiel 1 and 3 says, The word of the Lord came expressively unto, Eze unto Ezekiel the priest. Again, the word of God came to him. Ezekiel didn't find this word written someplace else. God now shows himself. And as pastor said, it's always word with God. God doesn't show up to Ezekiel so Ezekiel can see him. God speaks a word to Ezekiel because that's who God is. God is word. That's how we saw him from the beginning. Now we see the word wrapped in flesh. And it says, the son of Buzan in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Again, it shows us where the word comes. What, what Paul is rehearsing is only what Israel should have known. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. This is for God's purpose. How would we know how to carry out God's plan if God didn't speak it to mm -hmm. us. So God made it available through the prophets and now through preachers, through teachers, through those who will hear the word. And that's what Paul was doing. Once Paul found out what truth was, Paul began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, uh, the word lets us know in Hebrews 4 and 12 um, that the word of God is quick and powerful. In other words, it can go where nothing else can go, between marrow and bone, and discern the thoughts of men and the tent of man. So what it's saying, the word of God is there for us to help uh, us to be corrected, to help us do the right thing. For in Proverbs uh, 4, uh, and I think it's 4 and 12, 14, 12, says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. So in other words, in us, there are things that seem right. Remember when uh, God allowed human uh, uh, judgment, when uh, what was in, in the dispensations, human government, God, man was his own governor, his own judge. He set up his laws, his regulation. He did those things that he thought was right. Proverbs 21 and 2 says, a man weighs all his right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I see, what I say, what I think, that's right. 
but it's contributed to the Word of God. The Word of God comes to correct us, to let us know that our ways are not right. It is God's ways, that we must study God's Word, accept God's Word, that it may straighten out our lives. You know, I remember uh, coming along, again, in God's plan, and sometimes I try to figure out, you sit down and think about life, and God allowed me to be a part of different religions. And, um, and I got teachings from different religions, you know, that taught me different things. You know, one religion taught me that uh, uh, Mary was more important than Jesus and that uh, in order to get to Jesus, you had to go through Mary. And then, you know, then when it was time to pray, you had to pray to everybody, pray to the Father, pray to the Son, pray to the Holy Spirit, you know, pray to all of them. That way you cover all bases. You know, and, I, and I, another way, uh, salvation was just giving my hand to the preacher and throw a little bit of water on my head, and, and that was it. But it never told me or instruct me how to live. And I thought by the little bit of teaching that I did get, I, w I was doing pretty good until I heard the Word of God. And again, when the Word of God comes, it's contrary to what you've been taught. You get kind of upset, a little bit angry, because guess what? You think someone is going against what you were taught. Well, the Word of God came to justify, to clear up, to make known what was right and what was wrong. Remember, in this world, there's, a, there's opposition that keeps us from trying to learn God's word to keep us in a place where we think we are right. But the Bible lets us know that Satan has angels, has uh, demons that appear as angels of light. And the same way they did in the garden when the devil uh, rehearsed scriptures to Eve uh, and uh, misquoted them, or at, when Jesus was in the desert, he uh, quoted scriptures to Jesus and misquoted them. The same way these angels of light are uh, preachers that come do the same thing. They have their own agenda. They don't care so much about our souls. They care about the money in their pockets and their, their position. But the word of God is what's the important thing. If we bring God's word, if we listen to God's word, it would clear up all of our errors. It would help us live. It would help us uh, uh, to conquer those things that come up against us in life. Not saying these things won't come. They're going to come. But the instruction of God's word teaches us how to deal with them when they do come, that we won't be upset, we won't be discouraged, we won't be afraid, that we won't lose our minds. Because why? God's word settles us. But the Bible lets us all know, know in Hebrews that if you come to God, you must first believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And how do we seek him? Through his word. And when we use God's word to seek him and follow the instructions of God, he will reward us and bless us, and we will be abundantly blessed and have the favor of God. And the Bible lets us know we are more than conquerors. So no matter what we go through, when we use God's word in our situation, we're going to be conquerors every time. Might not feel like it, might not seem like it, but being conquerors is that we hold fast to what the word of God instructs us to do. Regardless of who walks away, regardless of who does not think that is right, regardless of how foolish we may look, if we hold fast to God's word, which is teaching and his doctrine, and we allow it to reproof us, allow us to, co allow it to correct us of our wrong teachings, we will be successful in this life and even in the life to come. Remember the title, God's word is good for mm -hmm. us. So then we need to f find out how is it good for us? Well, one thing we must not do and that is to change the word of God. Because mm. if you change the word of God, you change what God intends. When it says uh, in the scripture that it is good for doctrine. Well, we have to understand what that means. Doctrine is uh, the, the uh, teaching, right? Mm -hmm. It's the teaching. Well, it is about uh, uh, specific principles principles uh, it is about a foundational truth so the 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 doctrine of god itself and this is where we get ourselves into trouble we go to these churches and that's what pastor was just saying and they develop their own doctrine their own teaching you know but then when you look into the bible to see whether their teachings align themselves with what the bible says um, you will find yourself out of sorts with what they're saying and what the Bible says. And then you become confused about what to believe because you're looking at that man mm -hmm. that's standing in the pulpit declaring what he knows as though that is truth. And then you see it in, 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 in the Bible. I, I, I think uh, a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, Pastor was uh, reminding us of, a, a, a teaching we had gone to 
and the man was teaching word. Mm -hmm. But the things that we had heard weren't lining up to what he said. So we wanted to fight him and what he was saying. Right. But he was directly <laughs> out of the word of God. Now, it challenged us to change yes, what we believe. And that's what it does to everybody who is sitting under somebody who is not preaching the word of God. And your life is not changing. Well, that word, that doctrine that they're teaching isn't what God is talking about when he says it's good for you. Mm -hmm. His word and only his word will furnish us, right, and enable us to be able to do all of the good works that God has called us to do. You know, I mean, we, and we say it all the time, and I, I also uh, have said it in, in my uh, weeks uh, uh, teaching that, you know, people, you know, in the Bible, uh, there were a group of people who uh, always looked to discover new things, <laughs> to hear new things, right? Mm -hmm. So they could debate what was right and what was wrong. Well, the, the, the loving God that we serve left one doctrine, one teaching. One teaching, he began it, it, it himself. When Nicodemus came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he asked the question. Now listen to the teaching of Jesus. He asked the question, this is the doctrine. This is the doctrine. What must I do mm -hmm. to be saved? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is the doctrine. <laughs> he says, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. <laughs> this is the, the teaching. So now you say, okay, well, I've been born of the water and of the spirit. You know, I believe, you know, that's, that's, that's man's doctrine. Just believe the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and thou shall be saved. Well, you say, well, that's scripture. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But do you understand? That's the Ethiopian. How can I understand except some man be there to teach me? Well, you have to align the scriptures with God's word. Now, it says you got to be born of water and spirit. And then if you follow in the book of Acts where the church originates, you will find all that comes into the church is they have accomplished three things. They recognized they were chief, chief sinners. They repented. They were buried in Jesus' name. They rose and they were filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Not necessarily in that order. In the book of Acts, you'll find some of them being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost before they're baptized. But, now, and please don't mm -hmm. take it mm -hmm. this way, but you got to check all the boxes. All the boxes got to be filled. You got to repent. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And you have to uh, speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you that authority. This is Christ's doctrine. This is what he told Nicodemus. Now, what kind of God would say one thing to one person mm -hmm. and something else to somebody else? So if he told Nicodemus one thing and he's telling you, you don't have to do that. It don't take all of that. Is he really God? He's confusing to mm -hmm. me. You know, but what it does is, as Pastor said, when the word of God calls us in, to doing God's truth, we want to fight it. When the word of God says, if you hear it and do it, you will be blessed. You know, a lot of us claim that we know God. <laughs> we know of him, yes, but we don't know him. The only way you get to know him is by receiving his spirit. For what knows the spirit of a man except the spirit of a That's man? It. And what knows the spirit of God except the spirit of God? So if the spirit of the Lord is in us, it helps us understand and know just who he is. But the teachings, if we're, if, if we're going to understand and know who God is, first of all, uh, Deut uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4 says, Hear, Israel, the Lord our God is one. First of all, God is one. He is the only God and true God. There may be other gods, little small G gods, but God is the only true and living God. He tells us in Leviticus um, 11 and 44, for I am mm. the Lord your God. You right. should therefore sanctify yourselves yeah. and you should be holy, for I am solely holy. In other words, these are instructions. In order for us to understand and be a part of God, we must sanctify ourselves. How do you sanctify yourself? How do you set yourself aside? Mm. How do you make yourself right? 
through the Word of God. God's Word comes to instruct us in how to do these things. Teacher just said to us about Nicodemus, you must be born of the water mm -hmm. and of the Spirit. This is how we set ourselves aside as becoming a part of God's family. Any other way, hmm. any other way, the Bible says this, any other way, you are a thief and a oh, robber. Wow. There's only one way to God. There's one way to God that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gives us the instructions of how to get there. Now, some of us have been in churches for years. And some of us have uh, uh, claimed, uh, 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 claimed salvation through the doctrine, uh, through what they have taught us uh, as they learn in their theological schools. Go back and rehearse it. Go back and check it out hmm. and see whether or not it is what the Word of God says. Baptism is buried. It is being dipped. It is being immersed under water. Sprinkling the water on your head does not do it. It does not do it. Again, teacher said in Acts, how they spoke in tongues. It is evidence of one receiving God's Spirit. Because if we don't have evidence for ourselves, if we don't know for ourselves, right, someone right. can come along and make us think mm -hmm. that we don't have it. I remember a preacher said to me, I went to a revival one time, and the preacher uh, was preaching, and um, at that time, teachers told us last week that you don't have to tarry around the altar. Mm. If you believe it, the Holy Ghost can fall just like that. But then for some of us, it takes that. It takes All us right. conditioning right. ourselves. It takes us getting in preparation to receive God's Spirit. It takes us emptying ourselves out. And this is what I knew. So I went there, and, and, uh, and, and the Lord blessed me. I tarried uh, for seven, uh, five days, and, and the Lord filled me on the fifth day. And I spoke in tongues. And when, the young, when I went to the church, the man called me out. He said, are you saved? I said, yes, I am. He said, do you, see, do you receive God's spirit? Yes. I said, did you tarry around the altar? I said, you got it wrong. <laughs> I got it wrong. You got it wrong. <laughs> well, then the, the scripture came to me, let nothing shake your faith. Mm -hmm. You know, he may say I got it wrong, but I got it. Mm -hmm. I got it like the Bible says I was supposed to get it. And that's the only thing I rest in. He based his whole sermon against me on me that I didn't have it right. But the spirit, because of the instructions of God's word, settled me. So don't move. Don't let nothing move you off your faith. You got it through the word of God. You got it just like your word said. Now, now, you know, there were times, if you look at the Bible, tarry means to wait. Mm -hmm. That's what the disciples did. They waited in the upper room until the Holy Ghost fell. Now, the Holy Ghost is here. The only tarrying that needs to be done now is being done is the Holy Ghost waiting on us for mm -hmm. us to make up our minds to come to him. The Bible clearly instructs us on how to do it. Well, teacher said it. If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be. There's some more steps that you mm -hmm. have to take. And those steps, if you read God's word, again, teacher gave us a lesson through the Bible. Uh, you can't just grab one scripture and, and look for it to explain everything. Here a little, yeah. there a little. Here a little, there, line upon line, precept upon precept. And when you search these scriptures and put them together, it will tell you the story of just how to do it. So Jesus has given us the way through his word, how to be sanctified, how to be holy, how to live successful, how to live powerful through the word. And if, we, if we're going to fight the word, <laughs> then you're yeah. going to expect failure. Right. You know, sometimes we want to look, you can't do part of the word. You have to do all of it. Sometimes we do part of the stuff. Well, here you go. I'm one of those ones that don't like to read sometimes in putting things together. I like to look at the picture. I got the instructions. It tells me what to do. I want to look at the picture. So I start putting things together um, by the picture, and I find I have some stuff left over. Where does stuff go? Then I read the instructions. I have to break everything back down and start back over because the thing I was supposed to put in there first, I left it out. And that's what we do sometimes. We want to do stuff without God's word, without God's instruction. And we wonder how come things are not working because we're not doing the way God says do it. I remember a teacher gave us a lesson one time. I didn't think about it before. God is specific. God is detailed. When God told Noah to build an ark, he told him how many centimeters, how many cubic, how many inches, how many this, that, and everything to the, to the minute difference. If we try to do something without going to the finest detail of God's word, you know what's going to happen? It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. We have to do exactly, exactly what God said. And stop trying to uh, figure out, well, you know, I'm only human, but well, I'm a man. Just know you have to do it exactly the way God said do it. And the only way we can do it exactly the way God do it is through God's instruction and receiving God's Holy Spirit for him to give us the strength to do what needs to be done. But guess what? We cannot do it on our own. We need God to help us fulfill his word. Well, as, as Pastor was doing that, you know, that does exactly what the Word of God says it will do. 
uh, what issues we have with God's word is it rebukes us. Yes, it does. You know, but listen to what he said. He likes to look at pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a self-rebuking. <laughs> Once you got to tear it apart and do it all over again, it is a stern mm -hmm. rebuke when we're reproved of God. And that's what God's word does for us. I mean, what we should do is appreciate the Lord for what he does. See, see, I mean, you know, we understand that we're not all the same place in Christ. Because it says, Paul says that uh, on one occasion that he would love to feed them me. Mm -hmm. But they were still not able to stomach the milk. Um, so we understand that there are differences of, of where we are in Christ. But if our hearts are made up, if we have that made up heart, then we're going to seek God. So when we begin to study God's word, God's word, for those of us, you know, and, 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 and again, this is something that Pastor uh, says all the time. You know, I, I can guarantee you that there are a lot of people in church today uh, without their Bibles. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't even take them with them if they went to church or if they're listening to a message, they're not even looking at their word. So they just take what is being said to them, you know, and we will miss God because if the person who is leading us is missing God, what are they telling us? They're telling us what they think seems right. And that's not good for us. What is good for us? The, the, the scripture says, hear, O Israel, mm -hmm. for the Lord thy God is what? Two gods. No, one. <laughs> one God. So then God's message is one. And when we recognize this, God's word, even when it comes and, and reproves us or rebukes us, we should be happy. You know, we have matured in life, especially if we're adults. You know, we went through our lives as children thinking our parents didn't mean us good. They were mean. They were strict. <laughs> but then as we matured in life, we recognized that our parents were telling us things that they had experienced, things that they thought uh, they would uh, uh, shield us from happening in our lives if we would listen to them. But there was a way that we thought that mm -hmm. seemed right to us. <laughs> and most of us ended up in destruction. Well, it's the same way with God's word. We have to not only hear the word of God. We have to receive it. Right. And it will rebuke us. You know, stuff that I want to do when I read God's word and God said, don't do it. You know, that's what Paul told us last week. Had not the law said, mm -hmm. thou shall not. He said, I would have never known that uh, covet was a sin. But because it told me don't do that, then I recognize, well, you know what? It rebuked him. It reproved him because he was doing something against God. But now we have to change it once we find out. Did, did Paul like it? I'm sure he didn't at the time. But when we love God more than we love the things of this world. Again, Pastor touched on it. You know, when there are men standing in um, the, the pulpits of God's uh, churches, sanctuaries, and declaring untruth. You know what the Bible says? They may, be, they may have great salaries, mm. drive beautiful cars, live in wonderful homes, but the word of God declares this, you have your reward. Mm -hmm. That's not the way to be. You know, if I don't get anything here, anything here, I want my reward to come from Jesus Christ for saying what he said for doing what he says to do like he says to do it. I don't want you to think that we think we're perfect. Mm -mm. No, that's why we continue to do what Paul says. We continue to study. You understand? Because we may think we have something all right. You may have it part right. But as you continue to study, God will continue to reveal the things that you need to know. It is through the instructions of his word. But we have to say, the word of God is for all purposes. That's why it says, it is given by the inspiration God, of God and it is good for. It's for every situation we find ourselves in. And as long as we're willing to humble ourselves and come to God and accept his word, then we will be blessed.
the, the ultimate goal of God's teaching is to bring conviction, is to bring reproof, you know, that we may be in the right relationship with God. In other words, it involves, you know, God's words involves changing our thinking, changing our actions, how we do things, how we go about doing things. The Bible tells us, you know, if we, in all of our ways, if we acknowledge him, he mm -hmm. will direct us every time. Even in the simplest things, God will direct us. The Bible tells us again that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we're going to uh, trust God, we first of all got to believe he is God. That's what Hebrews say, that he is God. If we come to him, we got to believe him. Jump in for a minute. Then Isaiah said, uh, you know, about the preacher. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach it unless he be sent? Mm -hmm. Other words, man can't preach not unless God sent him. Just because you went to seminary school and got a degree doesn't mean you're a preacher. You may be one of man, a man's eyesight, but as far as God giving you a message and God sending you, no, it may sound good. You may get people to move, but did God send you? Or because you went to school and got an education for it or got a degree for it, that makes you a preacher. No, what makes us a preacher is God. Again, you must not look at us as who we are, what we used to be as me, Russell, this is James, and uh, Edward. You know, we, you, you, can't, you may look at us like that, but we are not the same as we used to be. The word of God changed us. The word of God transformed us. God has given us his word because of where we have been. God has blessed us to use some of our experiences to bless others. Because people might have said, about, man, that person, that he saved, how did he get saved? Mm -hmm. Now it gives us an opportunity to bless God and to uh, uh, encourage them by giving them a word because God has brought us out. Just like it was in the Bible, in, in the book of Joshua, when God told Joshua to go take Jericho, he sent the spies um, there first. And they came across Rahab. Listen now, Rahab said to them, look, we have heard mm -hmm. how your God opened up the Red Sea. We have heard how he did Shahar on all, how he defeated those great armies, how he did that. And because of what we've heard, the whole city hearts have melt because of what we heard. So in other words, Rahab changed because of what she heard, mm -hmm. not what she saw, but what she heard, not what was did her because of what she heard. So in other words, we should uh, be the same way she was because of what we have heard mm -hmm. about God's word, because of what God have done in his word, what we have seen, what God has done for others should be enough for us to believe that he is God. See, a lot of us come to God because we want miracles. We want mm -hmm. healings. Those are benefits that comes along with serving God. The reason why Jesus Christ came into the world is to save our soul. Not that all of us are going all of us are not going to be healed. All of us are not going to be delivered from the things that we're going through. But through the instructions of God's word, mm -hmm. it will keep us in the midst of what we're going through. It will hold us. It will protect us. It will not. It can't destroy us. Why? Because I'm resting in God's word. Yes, I'm going through something. Yes, I feel the pain. Yes, I feel the hurt. But because of God's mercy and because of me abiding by God's word, I'm able to. It is able to sustain me in whatever I find myself going through. The word of God is powerful. You know, the world was created by a word. You know, deliverance <laughs> by a word. <laughs> so God has given us a word. And if we can accept that word and we can allow that word to resonate or to grow within us and we live according to that word, there are things that we will be able to do that these natural bodies can't do it, but we are able to do it because of the word that rests in us. But guess what? We can't just be a hearer. You got to be a doer. You got to exercise this thing. And when we do that, guess what? When we exercise the word of God, other people will see God working in us. And guess what? And when God works in us and through us, they see something that will draw them, then it gives us an opportunity to share that word also with them that their lives too can be changed. Remember, Paul uh, speaks to Timothy and uh, he reminds Timothy of why he should fight the good fight of faith. He reminds Timothy that, listen, if you don't trust God, you know, because we have to put all of our trust in God, this way is made easy when our hearts and our minds are made up. Mm -hmm. Paul reminds Timothy, listen, you, you have seen what happened to me. The persecution that I faced, even to the extent of bonds, because I preached what the word of God says. So listen, we don't sit here with an expectation that if we say what God says, 
that it's going to be all right with mm -hmm. everybody. The Bible tells us that we need to be armed. Mm -hmm. Likewise, to endure the suffering of declaring truth. See, uh, uh, when, when Paul, when Paul uh, uh, speaks to Timothy and, and, and he finishes that, that, that uh, uh, verse 16, you know, that's uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. He says, for instructions mm -hmm. in righteousness. righteousness, not just instructions, but in righteousness. That is the right wiseness of God. And that's what this word does for us. It brings us into the wisdom of God because this is who God is. God is wisdom and this is what he's spoken into our hearing. He has spoken wisdom unto us. We have wisdom and then it will uh, uh, direct us to righteousness. Is everybody happy when you declare what the word of God says? Mm -hmm. Again, pastor said mm -hmm. it in his opening. Don't get mad at us. But when you do, we understand that mm -hmm. your hearts are not made up. You still want to do what you want to do. Listen, get in the word. You know, I mean, don't rely on your uh, self-reliance. Get in the word. Listen to what God is saying. His instructions are in righteousness. That's why the word of God is good for us. It will direct us. Listen, again, a pastor was saying, when I'm going through a, a real bad time in life, and listen, mm -hmm. uh, being saved does not omit me from those times in my life. When there are challenges that arises before me, you know what I'm saying? And, and being filled with the Holy Ghost, I have power, but it does not abstain me from those things mm -hmm. from happening. When trouble arises, listen, all of these things happen. I don't care if you're saved or not. But the word of God will direct me in how I am to apply myself in those situations. There's enough word of God to keep me. L listen, the, the, our, our mm -hmm. uh, scripture uh, told us, and you have to understand this. It said that the queen of Sheba mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. came from a far country, a far country. Right? Mm -hmm. To hear the wisdom mm -hmm. of Solomon. And this is what the word of God declares of Solomon. There was no one as wise as Solomon before him or after him. Watch that. Mm -hmm. Because the word doesn't leave us without understanding. She came from a far country to listen to Solomon. And the word of God went on to say everything she asked mm -hmm. of Solomon, Solomon answered her. And this is what she said. If I hadn't come and seen myself, mm -hmm. I would not know really how wise you are. Because the things that I heard don't even tell the half <laughs> of what you know. But why? Watch. Mm. Now the scripture goes on to say, but there is a greater yes, sir. than Solomon that has arrived. It says, if you don't believe the word of God, the queen of Sheba is going to rise in your generation mm -hmm. and condemn you. Because, listen, Jesus is wiser than Solomon. What he has to say has a greater impact than what... So, li listen, uh, <laughs> if the queen of Sheba declared that uh, what she heard from Solomon wasn't even half, listen, I'm going to tell you that we can only touch on what God is able to, I think it was Luke who said, listen, there's not enough no, books that's right. contain it. to contain <laughs> all of the wisdom of God. I got enough here to sustain me whenever something comes my way. And, 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 and you see God. God only works through his word. He will not deny himself whether you believe him or not. He will hold his word true. So then the best thing is to be a part of this, understand the doctrine of God, receive God's corrections, receive the instructions of God because it leads us down that path that's lit mm -hmm. by the word of God. And if we're in light, then the Bible says there's no darkness in us. That means we can see clearly what the word of God is declaring.
and we can live in the success of the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's all we're here to declare. You know, again, the lesson, the purpose and plan of God, and the purpose and plan of God's word is to bring conviction to our hearts that we may change our life to, to live in the right way. But one of the things, you know, I want you to understand, conviction, when it comes, it makes you angry. It makes you upset. It puts you to the defense. You ready to jump on the person that brings this conviction to you because who do you think you are? You think you better than me? No, that's not. But conviction is love finding us out. That God's love us so much that he convicts us to let us know what's wrong in our life because we're living a way we think is right. We think we are. We think we're doing the right thing. God's word is saying, no, it's totally against my word. So I bring this conviction against mm -hmm. you to help you understand you're not going the right way. You're doing something wrong. You're heading down a path of destruction. And my love, I don't want you to go there. So I'll bring someone, I'll bring a word to let you know that you're not going the right way. You need to change your ways. You need to hear what I'm saying. And this is what Jonah did. When Nineveh was about to be destroyed, God sent Jonah down to uh, uh, give Nineveh a word that uh, they could be saved because of the destruction that was coming. But you know, some of us, sometimes we think, uh, teaching and saying it throughout the whole lesson, cheapest of, cheapest of sinners, that Jonah thought he was more righteous than Nineveh. Mm. You know, I may not have done some of the things Nineveh done, but I'm better than, no. Sin is sin. Right. And so it doesn't matter what type of sin you committed, we are chiefest of sinners. And, you know, and sometimes we don't want to go to that person to tell them something because we think they cannot change. No, we can't change them, but the word can change them. All God wants us to do is speak a word, give a word to them, let the word do the work. We're not supposed to change them. We, we, we can't change. We can't even change ourselves. <laughs> so God have to do it. Jonah went down and preached to them. They were looking, you know, today we look for signs. You know, the signs to the Ninevites, Jonah went in the belly of the whale for three days. And he came preaching repentance. Jonah did not work any miracles. Jonah did not give any signs. All Jonah did was speak a word, and from the word that God gave them, the Ninevites repented, and it held off mm -hmm. the destruction that God was going to send on Nineveh. Now, did Nineveh get destroyed? Yes, because one generation passed off, and another generation came back up and picked up where the old generation mm -hmm. left off, and because they uh, uh, did it, God destroyed them. But God also said, that generation that heard my word mm -hmm. will rise up in judgment against right. this generation, right. the past judgment. Why? Because they heard the word of God. They repented and they did what God's word said. It changed their lives. So if you want your life changed, mm -hmm. you, you, you want to live different, you want to be comfortable, you want to be at peace, get the word. Mm -hmm. Because the word will settle you. The word will give us that peace that we need in the midst. It will give us the peace in the storm that will acquire us. That no matter what's going on, the word will come and settle you. I mean, God speaks, I mean, things can be going on, I and mean, God can speak a word in the midst of all your troubles and settle you. It'll give you a peace that you cannot understand. I remember my hmm. mom died. Uh, uh, we were coming back from Rock Hill, and my, my cousin told me that my mom had just passed, and they left her body out for me to give my final respects for me being the oldest son. I went back there, I went, and I saw my mom laying there so peacefully. I gave her a kiss and I said, Mom, you know what? You beat me there. You <laughs> made it before I did. But, you know, but that trying to get to God. And, then, and I came back home. My wife and I were riding. I got home. I said, well, that is a strange thing. I, I can't cry. Hmm. And, uh, and, and people were saying, you, you, don't be so macho. Don't be so brave. Don't be so this, that, and other. Don't try to be a man. I said, I'm not trying to be a man. I'm not trying to be macho. But tears just won't come. And she had to remind me, didn't God say he would give you a peace mm -hmm. that surpasses? I said, that's it. Mm. I said, that's what he's done. He's done something to me that, you know, it, you know, because now mom will say you. I'm resting in the fact that she is with the Lord. She's not in heaven yet, but she's mm. in that place of rest until time for us to all get together because she can't get there until I get there. <laughs> we all got to get there together. So she's in that place of rest, no more suffering, no more pain. But what changed her was the word. She heard the word mm -hmm. and the word changed her. She was of a different denomination, but came here and heard the word. It didn't make her upset. It made her search her life to see something was missing. Something's different. That's what it did to me. Something was different. Something had changed. I mean, I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get, but the word, the word just don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. The word fully do it. And when you get the word, and anything else is not going to suffice you. And when you have heard the word, this other preaching with gimmicks and sounds and stuff, it's not going to do it. It's the word. That's why a lot of people are moved by the emotion and the sound. 
But if you need to sit down and hear the word, mm -hmm. because when things come up against you, it's not the emotions, it's not the sound, it's not the mm -hmm. drum or the tambourine, it's not the speaking in tongues or nothing. It's the subtleness of God's words, of God's voice, a nice, clear, subtle word, you know, that will speak to you. That in the midst of what you're going through, mm -hmm. God will settle you. Where does that come from? It comes from his word. It comes from the promises of his word. And when you hear, but see, you got to believe God. Mm -hmm. You got to believe God. And when you believe him, he can sell you with only just the word. I'd just like mm -hmm. to add to what Pastor said. And, you know, I've always asked you uh, to jot the scriptures down. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go see for yourself. And then you can evaluate mm -hmm. whether I've said it or whether I'm only saying what God says. If you go to Revelations, the first uh, chapter, in verse 3, listen to what it says. Mm. It says, blessed is he that readeth. First of all, that's what we encourage you to do all the time. Don't take what we mm -hmm. say. Read the word of God. You may not come to understand it all by reading it, but this is a instruction from God. And he, he said, you will be blessed. You may not be at the moment you read it, but you will come to it. And then he says, and they that hear the word. Mm -hmm. Well, James said, you can't just be hearers. So that's not what it's saying. The audible sound of hearing the word is not when it says you are blessed. James says you got to also be doers. Well, Jesus said, how do I know you love me? Mm -hmm. It's not when you say, Lord, I love you. No, he says, I know you love me when you do what I have commanded you to do. So if you read it and then you hear it and then it says and then of this prophecy you have to keep those things which are written therein you know for the time is at hand. So now it has given us the instructions here we have to read hear and keep. So now as I said you may read it and you may not fully understand it. But if you continue to seek God, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of things you might have to do without understanding. Mm -hmm. You just, as Pastor said, you've got to have enough faith in God to say to yourself, if God said it, mm -hmm. that settles it, right? And then you do it because God has said it. And then, uh, listen, I, I, I've learned this little secret. You know, I used to always try to figure God out. <laughs> But the wisdom comes with, I don't have to figure him out. I just got to do what he says. You know what? And I know a lot of people don't like it when uh, people talk this way. But I take it off of me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying? I, I, I remove that, 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 that. Uh, uh, the Bible says this, cast all your cares. I'm not taking that weight. Hmm. I can't do nothing about it. So I remove it. God has given me that opportunity that I can do it. So why not do it? And I mean, when I don't understand, what's wrong with me saying? I don't understand. Right. Right? And then say, Lord, I need your mm -hmm. help. Now, uh, 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 you know, I, I, I'm not just going to get the help except that I invest myself. All right. All right? Mm -hmm. The help is already here. Just like the Holy Ghost is already here. But if I don't seek the Holy Ghost, I'm probably never going to find it. If I don't seek God in his word, I'm never going to understand it. So what I got to do? I've got to go after God. Uh, you know, the songwriter um, wrote the song. I'm chasing after mm -hmm. you. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the way it's got to be. Your love has got to be so great for God. Uh, you, you, you know... You know how, I just have to remind you, you know, because we, we lose sight of things. You know how we were when we were mannish, <laughs> when we were fresh, right? And we chased after what we wanted. Yes, sir. And we don't care how many times he said he didn't like us or how many times she said no, that didn't stop us. Determined. Right? We were determined. <laughs> exactly right. That's how it's got to be in your heart for God. Mm -hmm. God, and, but the, the key is, God's not going to tell you no. Mm -hmm. I mean, he will tell you no about stuff he doesn't want you to do, but not about your growth in him, not about you being matured in him. So, I mean, we have to remember who we were and, 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 and what, what our lives meant to us before we came to Christ. And we should be encouraged 
encouraged by the word that God has left for us to encourage us. You know, David didn't just encourage himself because he was king. He encouraged himself because he reminded himself of what God had done for him, mm -hmm. what God said to him. And that's how we do it. You know, this, this, this word is good for us. God doesn't need his word. We do. And when we receive it, we will be blessed above measure. Amen. Not with stuff, <clears throat> right? Mm. And it may not be with all health. <laughs> right. Right? Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, but you need to transform your mind. Take it off of that uh, tangible stuff that you can put your hands on. And understand that it is God's love for us. That should compel us to continue to seek him. His word's good for us. Amen. And the something teacher said, but we that read it and hear it, hear his word. You know, I remember in school they taught me to read silently. In other words, you just <laughs> read. And, and uh, you didn't hear what you were reading. You just was reading it silently. And one day the teacher said to us, how about when you read and call the words out to yourself? Hmm. Uh -huh. I wasn't taught that. But, but read, now, you, you don't be reading like that in school, but then the word mm -hmm. of God said, hear it. Yeah. So as I started reading the words and calling out and hearing myself reading it, <laughs> guess what? I wasn't just, I wasn't just reading it just to be reading it. That's right. I was hearing it for myself. Mm -hmm. And what I did, I wasn't reading it for the characters in the Bible. I was reading it for me. And I, as I read it, it took on a different meaning. I said, huh? God, you mean what? <laughs> and I mean, it took on a whole different meaning when I started hearing myself read to myself, hearing what the word of God says. And when you hear what God, you know, you know what God will do? It will give you hope. Mm -hmm. It will give you inspiration. It give you no matter how bad, in this pandemic, no matter how bad things are, the word of God gives us hope. He said, I'll never leave you. Yes. I'll never forsake you. I will always be with you. But you know where I get that from? God's word. By hearing. And sometimes I have to get up and move away from what I'm hearing because it is so much I can't <laughs> take it. I start crying and I, and I move away. I say, oh God. And then even reading it now, it brings the conviction. I have to get up and go pray and ask God to forgive me for things I've done. But, you know, but it's the word. It's all because God has a purpose and God has a plan for us in his word. Get in the word and stay there. Yes. And be ready when Jesus comes. Yes. Father, we want to say thank you for this privilege and this opportunity that you have blessed us just, just to speak your word. Father, we thank you for giving us your word, God, to show us our lives, oh God, to co convict us and to reprove mm -hmm. us, oh Lord, that our lives would change, oh God, according to your purpose and plan for our lives. Thank you for moving self out of the way, O oh God, that we were able to listen and hear you. Now, God, bless us that we allow you to order our steps in you, that we may walk according to your word, work it, yes. walk in the path that yes. you have laid before us. And, Lord, every now and then we allow flesh to rise up because it's condemned in the flesh. And, Lord, when we do that, bless with your word to recognize we have done wrong, that we will repent of our sins, O oh God, for you to reinstate us back mm. in the right standings with you. Lord, continue to bless Abel and myself as we sit before your people Sunday after bless Sunday, you, Wednesday Lord, after Jesus. Wednesday, bringing the word of God. Lord, bless that it never be, never hmm. be what we want to bring, Lord. Bless that we always bring, God, what you give us yes. to bring, Lord. And I know sometimes what we bring will upset people and make people angry, God. But as he said unto us, it's not our words. We have to be obedient unto you and bring what you should bring. For I'd rather people be angry with me, God, than for you to be angry with you. For man can't do but so much, but God, you can do a whole lot more than man. So God, man. bless us that we be obedient. Bless us that we have big ears to hear what you have to say. And God, after hearing what you have told us, bless us that we do, oh God, what you tell us to do. Even if we have to go by ourselves, oh God, bless us, oh God, that we be obedient unto you. Father, now do it for your glory. Yes. Do it for your honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we lift hands to the Lord, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you fault before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let God's people say together, Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you too. Again, we say peace as always, and we say to God be the glory until God will bless us to meet you again. In Jesus' name. At this time again, we thank you for a wonderful lesson. We thank you for your presence with us. And at this time, if there's something that's on your heart that you would like to say or like to discuss or uh, 
You're even testimony what the word has done for you. You may do so at this time. Ourselves for our morning service. 